All right, my friends, I'm back out to this uh, commercial slab that we're doing. It's a Sunday, <laughs> I'm out here working. Uh, actually I actually had to come out and ground a slab. So you can see the progress. They've got all of the rebar, all that steel in that slab. We've got our, our main uh, three, four inch feeds that are coming all the way over from that transformer. We got our inspection on it. And so we were able to cover all that up. Uh, we've got on the left hand side, we've got where our MDP is going. That's where all of our main distribution panel is going. That's gonna distribute out to other panels and transformers. Um, so now they're getting all of the steel prepared. They're raising it up a few inches off the, uh, off the actual dirt mound. And then I had to get my grounding electrode conductor in, so I had to ground this slab. And what we're doing is a concrete encased electrode, which uh, if any of you don't know, it's basically um, utilizing, in this case, the rebar. So right here, I've got a thick piece of rebar that's 20 feet long, and I'm ensuring that I'm connecting uh, my grounding electrode, it's a 2 op grounding electrode that's copper, I clamped onto that rebar and I'm using that rebar as my grounding electrode. It's kind of like using a ground rod, but we're putting it all in concrete. So it's kind of like laying a ground rod down into a bunch of concrete and then hooking a wire up to it. It's a very similar kind of thing. But underneath that, it's all clear. They don't have any ins of this insulation. So we are in direct contact with the earth right there. Our electrode is up uh, more than two inches off of the earth. It actually has to be fully encased in the concrete. And then I've got its sleeve. So I actually took THHN or THWN and I brought a conductor that has sheathing on it. Uh, you can see it's THWN2. But the part that's gonna be in the slab, I took uh, and, and stripped off all that insulation. And then the rest of it where it penetrates through the slab, I've got a piece of Smurf tube that actually makes our penetration into the concrete. And then once I put my MDP up here and build it, that's gonna go right in and it's gonna um, bond to our neutral. So that's gonna be our grounding electrode conductor and it's hooked up to our grounding electrode that is concrete encased. Now the weird thing where this job is at, we actually have two different inspecting agencies we're kind of in between two areas. So back behind me, you see that power pole right there. All of this underground, all the way over to where those three, four inch stub up, that's the utility company. So they're going to be inspecting all of our underground that comes into the building. And then from there, anything that touches the building is gonna be a city inspection. So that's gonna be Austin, or a uh, city of Austin that comes out and does that. So basically this is all utility and this is city of Austin and they're gonna come and inspect uh, we still got enough under there that we can show them our depth. And then at the slab, we're like way below depth. We don't have to be that low, but I'm about three feet deep the entire way. And you can actually see it once you get down in the slab over there. So uh, we passed our power, our, our uh, inspection power company. So now I just have to get the city inspection on everything that's going in the slab. And then the last thing that I'm gonna have to do, we don't have any power out here anywhere. If you look around, there's no like power poles or anything. So what I have to do, is come back here, you can see one of these power poles. Uh, I'm gonna put a T-pole or a temporary pole that's gonna stand up out of the ground. It's gonna have a meter, it's gonna have a panel on it and probably some receptacles. So I have to dig a trench, that's probably 150 feet away. So I have to dig a trench all the way over here and bring it down just kind of close by somewhere, stub some conduit up. That way I can actually run some temporary power and get like 60 amps pulled over here and build what we call a possum. Some people call it an armadillo, uh, but we call it a possum, and it's basically just a temporary power station that we can put inside the building so as everything's being built, people aren't having to run 150 feet over to that pole to plug things in and use extension cords and have all that voltage drop on their equipment. Um, they can run everything you know, here on the job site, inside of the job, so I have to do that. And then there's gonna be a bunch of light poles that go out here and some light poles that go on the back over there. Um, we've already got a lot of the poles set. This is going to be one of the light poles. They've got a sonic tube. Uh, basically, that's where all the fill for the concrete's gonna be. This grade is actually gonna get raised quite a bit. Um, they're just gonna backfill all of this stuff. But one thing we had to do is we had to run rigid. And I actually need to put something in here, like a template over this so it sits in the middle. Because I don't want these guys to go pour all this stuff and then the, you know, the pipes are like way off at an angle like this. Um, so they made us put those in. And then you can't see it from here. This is filled with water right there. Uh, we had to CAD weld each one of our grounds onto a ground rod. And at each one of the poles, we had to drive a ground rod in the earth. 
and then cat weld so it's a permanent connection um, which we don't have to do very often it's just that in this location this inspector wanted us to do it but normally we don't have to do that so I've got another uh, pole base uh, right over there got one here and then I think we've got three up uh, on the front of the property now I have to go and actually dig in between each one of the poles because once they're done with this slab the next thing you're gonna want to work on is getting this whole entire driveway parking lot area to look exactly like this looks and they're gonna pour concrete for all the vehicle traffic so before they get to that point I have to do all of my underground and get all that ready Oh yeah, one more thing that I thought was really funny. <laughs> Check this out. We're right next to I-35, which is a busy road at all times. So there are people that come by and steal stuff. They'll steal like uh, skid loaders. They'll steal, you know, forklifts. That's actually a telehandler. Everybody calls it a forklift. That's a telehandler. Um, but they'll steal heavy equipment and just take off with it. But another thing they'll do is they'll take their truck and they'll hook up to the rods on one of those uh, connexes and they'll drive their truck and just break the doors off and then they'll go through and empty all of our stuff. There was a job I was off uh, uh, not too long ago that I had just, I don't know, probably 20 rolls of MC, a whole bunch of stuff, a bunch of electrical materials. And somebody forgot to actually lock, you know, put locks on every single one of these. So two of them they were able to open and they just snapped the door completely off and took all of our stuff. It's kind of crazy. So, so that doesn't happen. It's the same builder on this busy, busy road. They're like, why don't we just park all of the heavy equipment right in front of the door? <laughs> so now nobody can get into the doors. This one we took everything out of, but they were doing the same thing. They were taking all that equipment and parking it right in front of that door so nobody could take it. I just thought that was kind of funny.